Okay, so um, this week, Intel broke cover. The Intel Arc B580 is a thing. It is real, as is the B570. Um, it is indeed um, <laughs> Intel's attempt to crack uh, the, the kind of mainstream market. $250 confirmed. 12 gigabytes of frame buffer memory confirmed. Um, better performance than RTX 4060. They're mooting that. Um, last week, we were suggesting that maybe they could um, challenge the 4060 Ti, which would be amazing to do at $250. Now, interestingly, I'm looking at Intel's own benchmarks for this. And um, they actually have a slide here um, which has uh, a kind of breakdown against the 4060 across a whole bunch of games. There's some games, a minority based on Intel's benchmarks, that are actually going to be slower. Starfield, um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Robocop Rogue, Rogue City, Gears 5, that one's interesting, Counter-Strike 2. But, you know, it's still there or thereabouts. And then they've got a much longer line of games where they're either on par or more typically faster. Um, their average is that they suspect they're going to be 10% faster than uh, NVIDIA RTX 4060. That's at 1440p Ultra. Uh, as to how they've configured that, whether that's native resolutions or whether it's using upscaling, I think it might be using upscaling. I'm not sure. We're going to have to validate this with testing. But this is looking potentially quite exciting. And um, they're looking at these results here. They actually have up to 43% faster than Cyberpunk 2077. Now that would be very, very interesting, bearing in mind that in my testing, Cyberpunk is highly tuned for um, uh, for NVIDIA hardware, specifically with ray tracing. So maybe that's not using ray tracing, who knows? But yeah, this is looking quite exciting at this point. Um, Oliver, you've been following this story. Mm -hmm. There's some interesting stuff here. It's potentially, I mean, well, we've got a supporter question here, which we, which kind of gets to the point. Uh, and it comes from Retro Sean. Do you think that the second generation of Intel discrete graphics will have more of an impact this time? Well, I think it will have more of an impact. The question is whether it's enough to make people just, even for a second, consider not buying a 4060, <laughs> which is selling in like gi gigantic numbers at this point. Yeah, I kind of think it will have more of an impact if just because of that price point and the fact that you're looking at 12 gigabytes of VRAM for that higher end card or 10 gigabytes of VRAM for the lower end card for $30 less, that's a really compelling prospect, especially when we start to look at games that are very VRAM heavy, um, even now, like Indiana Jones, yeah. apparently. And the price here is certainly the right price. I think probably the question in a lot of people's minds will be, are the drivers good enough? I noticed that Tom Peterson yep. has been doing the rounds, talking about how much the drivers have improved and how good they are now. I don't know if that's true at the moment. Um, I'd probably be happier with an AMD or an Intel card in terms of that driver compatibility for new titles. But if they can get the driver compatibility up to a good level there, um, that will certainly be very, very interesting. But one element that I am a little bit intrigued by and slightly concerned about is die efficiency because the die they're Thanks, using yes. for these new cards, apparently it's 272 millimeters squared on TSMC-5. Um, that's Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, I was at the presentation. They did confirm that, yeah. Yeah, that's way bigger than AD-107, which is the GPU that's used for the RTX uh, 4060 there, uh, which it's not enormously faster than, you know, like Rich said, 10% faster than that card. And it's almost as big as AD-104 which is 294 millimeters squared, which is a much more powerful yeah. GPU. That's in the RTX 4070, for instance. Um, now, one element that does throw a little bit of a wrench in this is the memory interface is sub substantial at 192 bits. Memory interfaces have tended not to scale as well on newer process nodes, um, but the density yeah. to me is still pretty low. That's probably not good for Intel's margins. Probably not that good as well for mobile products. Um, it's also a little bit power inefficient at 190 watts relative to NVIDIA there, where like the 4060 Ti is, I think, 160 watts and it's more performant. But relative to AMD, I think it's pretty decent power efficiency. So I don't want to knock them too much for that. It's just uh, just something to note there. But yeah, I, I am very interested in this card. I'm also very interested in what they're doing with XCSS2, which perhaps we can talk about a bit more. But I think the hardware yeah. here it's very, very compelling for $250 if the drivers can be right. There are some elements that to me are a little bit concerning, 
but probably got a lot less concerning for $250 for a 12 gigabyte card that is faster <laughs> than a 4060. Yes. So that's that's my basic take. So yeah, it wasn't just about the hardware that they were discussing. They were also talking about um, new software. They've increased um, the utility of their overclocking, which doesn't particularly interest me, um, to be honest. I kind of think overclocking is kind of dead at this point. Maybe there will be some kind of small performance bump that you'll be get, you'll be able to get out of this. I don't know. But typically in the era of boost, um, you're getting most of the silicon's sort of performance anyway. But more interesting is the fact that they are now deploying their own version of frame generation. Unlike the AMD solution, it is using machine learning. And um, so, yeah, it is a part of XESS, XESS2. Um, there's not really much that's that's given away about that, though. We're just going to have <laughs> to test it, you know, at this point. I think the problem with coming in so much later than DLSS, and FSR3 has had the same problem. Um, the issue is that um, game take-up is, is kind of laggier compared to DLSS3, which is, you know, effectively the standard for frame generation. You know, if a game is going to have frame generation, it's going to um, support DLSS3, and you might get FSR3. So where does that leave um, XESS? It's even sort of further behind. Hopefully, there'll be some kind of uh, unification push, similar to the way that there is happening for super resolution. Um, going back to the die-sized stuff that you were talking about there, Oliver, it's, um, yeah, um, you're quite right. Um, the, the, the memory controllers aren't particularly scalable. Yeah, and I also think that the uh, the route that they're taking with uh, AI acceleration may be quite inefficient in terms of die area versus NVIDIA, but, you know, that's all sort of speculation at this point. Um, what can I say? I, I wish Intel well here. I'm going to be reviewing the card. In fact, I've got it. It's it's on my uh, test rig over there, which I'm just setting up to, to test this at the moment. And uh, also of interest, I guess, is the fact that they do actually have an ev even cheaper offering coming. And that is um, the B570. So the spec reductions there, um, you're getting um, 18 XE cores rather than 20 uh, in the B580. Um, but otherwise, small reduction on XMX AI engines, small reduction on graphics clock, very, very small there. Uh, you're still getting 10 gigabytes of memory and um, memory interface down to 160 bits versus 192 from the B580. Um, and again, um, the power requirement goes from 190 watts down to 150 watts. Um, both B580 and B570 will have um, PCIe uh, X8 interfaces using one um, PCIe 8-pin power input. Looks pretty good there. And I'm kind of interested about this B570. We're not going to be seeing it until January. But I do remember, you know, looking back at the first generation ARC cards, the only real difference between the A750 and the A770 was um, the memory <laughs> allocation, 8 versus 16 gigabytes. Those cards were very, very similar. In fact, some games actually benched identically, which is quite staggering. So I'm wondering, you know, the B570, I think it's going to come in at 219. So that could be even more of a value champion, um, which, which is kind of nuts. We just have to wait and see. Exciting times there. I just think that the problem Intel are going to be facing is that, well, um, uh, <laughs> everything in the sort of mainstream market is is kind of driven by market perception and market perception is driven by the Halo products and they haven't got one, at least not at this time. So, you know, it's typically the fact that, you know, an RTX 4090 comes out, it's defined as the best of the best. And then everybody thinks NVIDIA is the best and just buys the card that they can afford. Um, it's a strategy that's worked time and time again. And I'm really going to be interested to say, see whether this can actually make any kind of difference. But on paper, at least, it just looks like a much better pro product. And certainly for the games that we like, you know, the higher end AAA titles, um, that's where the uh, B580 is, is significantly outperforming the 4060. So, you know, bring it on. I can't wait to test it. 